What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training HQ and today I want to talk about a very common issue I see discussed and that is butt wink in the squat or lower back rounding in the back squat in the bottom position. Now this is something that I've had a separate video on in the past and then I made how to squat with perfect form which was a bit more in depth on how to reduce lower back rounding but both of those videos were extremely oversimplified and they were really just to reduce lower back rounding rather than to entirely prevent any pelvic tilt. So that's why I'm making this video because with my form check service, something I've realized is that pretty much everybody thinks that they have a butt wink problem and a lot of times I barely see anything. There is very slight flexion and it's not problematic at all in any way. So briefly I want to go over the ways to reduce lower back rounding and that is first to allow your knees to come forward to start the lift this will allow you to keep your core tighter as you come into the hole rather than swing forward and lose that tightness. Then also to open up at the hips. And both allowing the knees to come forward and opening up the hips allow you to maintain a more vertical torso. Which is extremely important because lower back flexion, lumbar flexion, occurs when there's a discrepancy between the hip angle and your torso angle. However, when it comes to the angle of your hips, I've seen a lot of people talk about making your hips essentially like a bucket that you don't want to spill as you go into the bottom of the squat. However, this is not accurate because if your hips are essentially parallel to the floor, then you actually do have lumbar flexion because as I said, your hips need to be equal to your back angle. It's safe to assume that you're not gonna have a 100% vertical torso in the bottom of a squat, so what you actually have to do is to maintain an anterior pelvic tilt in the bottom position to entirely prevent lumbar flexion. Now before making this video, I tried to watch as many videos as I could of people squatting well below parallel, and I wanted to see if I could find one example of absolutely no butt wing. What I found was I couldn't find one example. The only thing I did see was that some Olympic weightlifters allow their knees to come so far forward that they're not necessarily breaking parallel to that great of an extent. So I was thinking if many of these Olympic weightlifters who are essentially genetically built to squat and have exceptional mobility, if they can't keep a perfectly neutral spine in a well below parallel squat, then it would be extremely unrealistic to expect the average person or average athlete to do so. And seeing how consistent that pelvic rotation was when below parallel, despite I'm sure the differences in mobility among the athletes, it had me thinking that this probably isn't a mobility issue. At least it's unlikely at a certain point to be the main cause. And more specifically, something I see people commonly say is that it's due to hamstring inflexibility. And I simply don't believe this. I believe that this is a myth because your hamstrings are not maximally stretched in the bottom of a back squat. Now understand that that doesn't apply to the deadlift because in that lift, that's where your hamstrings might be maximally stretched and might be limiting your ability to keep a neutral spine. But you can just feel for yourself. Get into the bottom of a squat and tell me if you feel that your hamstrings are fully stretched. All right, so now you're probably wondering what is the cause of this pelvic rotation of this lower back rounding in the bottom of a squat if it's not necessarily going to be mobility? And the answer is that it's morphology. It's your structure, the actual structure of your hip joint. And I'm not just basing this on a theory made up by my observations. Rather, I'm linking a video by Brett Contreras in the description. He's an extremely intelligent expert when it comes to biomechanics. In that video, he explains how some people simply genetically aren't built to squat as deep as others while maintaining that neutral spine. How there's not necessarily anything that they can do to entirely fix the issue. However, he does also say that there are small improvements that they can make, and he says something quite interesting, that you can have slight lower back rounding, and it's not necessarily that big of a problem. Now this gets to the point of my video. Assuming no extreme abnormalities, I believe that everyone should squat below parallel. So avoiding butt wink, trying to do whatever you can to avoid that, will prevent you from hitting proper depth. And in my opinion, this is the biggest problem. The fact that generally speaking, there's inevitably going to be some lower back rounding in a deep squat points to the fact that we shouldn't hyperextend our lower back during the descent because doing this will just make the butt wink more drastic. Now I've seen some people essentially tuck their butt in before they squat at the start and try to keep their butt tucked throughout. Now you can do this to entirely avoid the butt wink, but the problem is now your lower back's rounded throughout the entire movement. Personally, I would rather have it just be rounded at the bottom position and then go back into proper alignment as quickly as possible. Okay, so not only do I believe that you should squat deep without worrying about lower back rounding to a very small extent, but I also found a study that was done on this topic. I'll read a direct quote from the most important part right now. 
it says the point at which the subject loses the lumbar curve cannot be used as a cue to determine when a person should cease the descent. We suggest that kyphosis of the lumbar spine in deep squatting is a natural part of the squat movement when using loads equal to 50% body weight and coaches should not prevent experienced squatters from allowing this to happen to the small extent in the research. The study also mentioned that a slightly increased stance width helped reduce the lower back rounding. And this supports my recommendation of the hybrid squat for most people given that some people just aren't necessarily that flexible to perform a full deep Olympic squat. Alright, so the final question is to address what extent is acceptable. And this is something that Brad Contreras mentions in his video that it really just takes experience to know when it's too excessive in terms of the lower back rounding. Personally, what I suggest is that you look to see if it's affecting your ability to maintain thoracic extension. Because if you do have excessive lower back rounding, a lot of times what will happen is that then also you won't be able to maintain the proper thoracic extension needed in the bottom position. So usually if you're able to maintain this thoracic extension, then the lower back rounding still will occur to a slight extent, but it just won't be as drastic. And more specifically, what I recommend is that you try to build up the mobility to be able to overhead squat with a medium grip, which means not with a snatch grip like you see most people overhead squat, but just with around a shoulder width grip. And if you can do this successfully and hit depth, then in my opinion, you absolutely have nothing to worry about as far as butt wink or lower back rounding, because that means you're able to maintain a pretty upright position and you're able to maintain lower back tightness because you simply cannot overhead squat without your core being tight. All right, that's it guys. I hope this video is helpful. Make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching guys. Peace. The flabbergasted avalanche of ambulance is near. The labyrinth of pants lab is adamantly here. No assignments, book of rhyming, and I'm drawing doodles.